look at our citrus grape. Oh my goodness. Look at the growth of this citrus. So That's because I've been taking care of it. Oh yeah? Yeah. So guys, to encourage your citrus healthy growth and fruit set, your citrus tree in container must receive adequate water, drainage, uh, light, and nutrients. So in this video, I bring Greg with me. He's going to uh, talk about we are going. We, both as, uh, we work as a team. So we're going to talk about fertilizing your citrus so this is going to be a little bit longer guys and uh, the content of the video is a little bit longer so <laughs> we advise you to grab a cup of coffee and if you feel sleepy stand up do some exercise a little bit to keep you awake <laughs> all right so now we're going to talk about fertilizer on citrus so citrus needs uh, nutrients to thrive and uh, it has to be in equal or adequate proportion so there are two uh, groups of nutrients the macronutrients and micronutrients and macronutrients is given in a larger number and micronutrients is given in smaller number now the, your macronutrients which is the nitrogen mm -hmm. phosphorus, phosphorus and potassium. potassium there's another one calcium magnesium and sulfur those are macronutrients and if the macronutrient macronutrients surplus or too high as opposed to <laughs> micronutrients which is the smaller number there will be a tremendous depletion in the nutrients in the soil so how do you know when your plant needs to be fertilized is there a particular time of year you just automatically do it or do you wait until your plant starts showing symptoms well uh, the best way to do that is to understand when is the time your citrus needs fertilizer or or you know you should look at the uh, analysis analyzing the citrus uh, performance especially the leaves the leaves are your key to analyze if the nutrients needed for example like uh, nitrogen if it is less nitrogen then you might have to add nitrogen. So stay, stay with us guys because we're going to show you how to fertilize the citrus. <laughs> now nitrogen is helping your plant to increase chlorophyll. Now here, let me show you here. Now the, the plant processes their own sugar or energy in the process of micro, uh, the chloroplast. Now the chloroplast if it's a chloroplast contains chlorophyll and in this chlorophyll is going to help the plants to capture energy from the sun to get that energy and divert that energy to all parts of the plant now when you fertilize like for example you you had that foliar spray i saw you mm -hmm. uh, doing foliar spray and what was that nutrients you spray with you have this one here. So he, Greg, made this foliar spray. What, what foliar spray you, you put in there? Oh, here. Ah, right okay. Here. So this is the one that Greg used. And uh, how much this one you put in here? I don't know. You just got to read the directions on yeah. the back of it. And mix. I think it's like so you just follow the direction port. in the label and then place in your... Pool, uh, it's a quick fix. It's, uh, it's absorbed right away by the plant it doesn't have to go through the root system yeah so your foliar spray should be given like before prior to or during flowering or prior to flowering season it's better if you put it on the spray rather than the stream <laughs> there you go so this is going to help your citrus to increase the production of chlorophyll by undergoing photosynthesis so Get that uh, foliar spray and then add to this. Can you read what the uh, nutrients are in this? I don't have my glasses on. What is my glasses? All right. So now you said about, so how do you fertilize your citrus? <laughs> the best way you said you go to Home Depot. <laughs> how do you go to Home Depot and buy a bag of citrotone? That is the quickest way. That's the quickest way because everything's balanced already. As yeah, opposed this is, to uh, making your own 
fertilizer. Oh, they're, they're right. <laughs> this uh, word is oh, they, even my glasses. These guys put everything in micro letters. Yeah, you gotta, magnesium you is one percent. You gotta have your on with the magnifying glass to read uh, it. The the sulfur is one percent. Uh, no, four percent of sulfur. Now the sulfur, it's really important. That is the other yeah. macronutrients. Yeah, it's it magnesium, is, sulfur, iron, manganese, zinc. So you're so, not getting your your uh, your NPK in there. You're just getting your other nutrients. So the best time to fertilize your citrus, guys, is before uh, before the growing, season. the growing season and during the flowering and also during yeah. harvest. Now here's something else I would recommend also in the springtime. Give it a granular slow release that'll last you all summer long. And then when you get towards around, like up here in our hemisphere, in the northern hemisphere, it starts getting cold in late October, early November. Mm -hmm. I would say in early September, give it a liquid fertilizer rather than a slow release. Mm -hmm. So you don't want it, you want it, you don't want your citrus tree to keep pushing out flowers and everything as the season starting mm -hmm. to get cold because it ain't going to make it mm -hmm. unless you bring it inside in a heated place. Uh, mm -hmm. But you got to remember that whenever you move that tree from outside, you bring it inside, it's going to go through a shock and it'll start turning yellow leaves and they'll leave, the leaves are going to drop, mm -hmm. your fruit's going to drop, your blossoms will drop. And it's not because it's not proper nutrition, it's just going through a reacclimation period. Mm -hmm. So uh, you you studied a lot of splitting of the fruit. What causes it? The splitting of the fruit. Too much nitrogen. Too much nitrogen. Too much nitrogen. The same thing with tomato plants. We'll do the same. Tomatoes will do the same thing. They they split. You're giving mm -hmm. it too much fertilizer, and same with your citrus will do the same thing. They'll start splitting. Mm -hmm. And other other also causes of that is probably like you know in some summertime, in summertime that it is from hot to dry. And then during dry season, the, the fruit is more of a fairly el inelastic. But once your irrigation, so you have to correct your irrigation because too much water, like you have too much rain. Mm -hmm. I saw our citrus land there a long time ago. We have that splitting of the fruit because if it is too much, uh, the cause of that is uh, too much moisture in the soil and also temperature fluctuation and humidity. And then if you, during the dry season, and then you overwater the tree or constant rainfall, it makes the tree to split, right? Yeah. So how are you going to prevent it from <laughs> splitting? Now that is the question. And I dig into that, uh, how do you prevent it from splitting the fruit? So I found out that in order to prevent the problem, you need to, you know, add calcium and potassium magnesium magnesium in the soil so you can either put the nutrients in the soil mix in the soil which I'm going to do that later on and then foliar spray so that is the uh, there's also a product on the market called CalMag mm -hmm. and I don't have any of it here I bought some this summer but I can't find where I put it now but in how about a, in citrus tone? I will get the citron. Go Keep going, Greg, explaining it. The, the CalMag comes in a pre-measured amount. You just mix it in your water and pour it right into your plant, and that will uh, take care of that problem for you. you see, the calcium magnesium is used primarily to develop and boost your plant's immune system from diseases. And without your CalMag, you're going to have all different type of diseases that can break out. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So here's the fertilizer. This is the fertilizer we always use in our citrus. It's a citrus stone and it is a great espoma. And, uh, espoma. This is espoma. Yeah. And it is really great uh, combination or a balance of mi macro and micro nutrients. Oh my gosh, I cannot even see. Right here. So now when you look at the label, if you can see that, it is five to six and uh, so you have five nitrogen and then two uh, phosphorus and six potassium. Can you now, explain to the, everybody what phosphorus and uh, potassium does for your tree? Now the, the potassium and nitrogen is very important. It should be given in a larger number and this is a good combination because the potassium is making your your plant uh, immunity stronger and it also reduces the risk of pests and diseases so that's why potassium is uh, 
the key or the driving key routes for, routes for roads. Yeah. yeah, so you should apply your potassium uh, in a, I would say seasonal, like before end of the uh, fall, then uh, springtime, you need that potassium bigger, so potassium and nitrogen should be higher. And this is really great. Now, the thing of this uh, fertilizer, when you see the nitrogen, the nitrogen is only 5%. And you need, it's, it's in springtime, they are really in active growth and you need to increase your nitrogen. So I would say I will increase the nitrogen. Now, mostly here in the greenhouse, I don't use much of nitrogen as a synthetic. I use organic because it is really uh, helpful to the plants. Now, if you want to use spuma stone in spring because the nitrogen is only 5% and you want that to increase maybe 15%, then you might have to, uh, how, how much a cup you are going to apply for, for that? Well, each one of our milk crate uh, planters has five gallons, about four and a half gallons of soil a little bit shy at the top. So I would put one cup of the citrus tone and I would put it around the outer edge, along the edge of the pot, and then mix it into the soil. Don't leave it just set on top. It'll uh, it doesn't it doesn't get absorbed that way. You got to mix it into the soil. Mm -hmm. So the, the roots, the hair roots, are going to take the absorption in there. So he said applied. There's a label in here. You can read the label. But that's what we did in our citrus. We gave uh, five uh, five gallon for a uh, one cup of fertilizer of this in a five gallon container and then we added worm casting so add worm casting or uh, uh, organic compost because it breaks down don't slowly. forget before you start putting your fertilizer on there make sure you check your soil's ph because you can put three bags of this on one pot and if your ph isn't right mm -hmm. it's not going to absorb any of it mm -hmm. uh, so make sure you check your ph we did a video on ph a couple weeks ago Watch that video first before you start doing your fertilization. So we, we put together a whole series of videos for organic or uh, for uh, citrus in containers. Mm -hmm. Watch them all because each one is equally as important. You've got to understand each step. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that would be the number one, uh, the number one activity you need to do before fertilizing. That's now, true with every plant, not just citrus. Not just citrus. You have yeah. to check the pH because. The citrus uh, pH is 6.5 and, and 6.8, so that is the uh, adequate range of your citrus. And some of the citrus, for example, I was laughing at this about this uh, boron. <laughs> this boron, my son is really great in chemistry, so he, he is helpful in. Uh, Boron. Boron, you know, when boron, molybdenum. When so I was a kid, my we used to have a gas station called Sohio Gas. And they used to say, Sohio Gas has boron. And they said the boron made your, gave your car more mileage per gallon. I'm like, boron, why do we need boron in plant fertilizer? What does boron do for plants? So we had to do some research on that one. Go ahead and tell them what boron does. <laughs> boron is helping your, your plant. It, it stimulates or activates some of the enzymes and, and protein in the tree to uh, increase the chlorophyll production. So that is the part. And also, it helps during the uh, flowering and fruit set. So it has to be given in a, a smaller amount. So how would you, let me ask you this, how would you know if you have a plant that is deficient in boron? That's a good thing to know. So you have you have a video on that and the deficiency of boron. No, I that. don't. Yes, I'm, we do. The no, deficiency, all deficiency. Not on boron, I don't. <laughs> I saw I saw the uh, you know when I did my research, I saw like burning, like it's almost like first like fertilizer burn, and you have this yellowing, and it, it's bad because it looks like a dark yellow on the spot of the of the leaves and that is the deficiency of boron and this one here is a complete you know yeah, you can see the boron in here yeah and uh, I like this one that you showed here because mm -hmm. it has a combination you need this uh, 
foliar spray, guys. So besides uh, applying, Angelo, uh, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> Angela I mentioned you again. <laughs> Angela is one of our uh, one of our favorite one of our family members, family member in uh, in our YouTube community. So again, get this. Uh, use this as a foliar spray. Do it now because we are almost going to spring. You so can almost use this almost any time, any time yes. of the year because yeah, it's a summer, foliar. You know. you so can you summer, use this spring, like, fall. like during the during flowering because in flowering mm -hmm. they use a lot of nutrients, especially magnesium and nitrogen. And taking that nitrogen and magnesium, that's why you see the plants. The, the yellowing of the leaves. Now when I use that foliar spray, does it matter if I spray the top or the bottom of the leaf? You're the one who applied it. Yeah. How did you apply it? The bottom of the leaf is where you're going to absorb it from. The top of the leaf is only for photosynthesis. All your um, intake of vitamins and everything come on the bottom. So spray it. Get yourself one of those big pump sprayers mm -hmm. that has a nozzle so you can stick it underneath the leaves and spray it from underneath. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because this is this is the area where they breathe. That's so right. They, they also so take in their nutrients from the bottom of the leaves, not from the top. Yeah, so the roots and the roots and leaves are the main organ that are responsible during gas exchange. You know, so the roots will take up that water or nutrients and then the leaves is going to take the carbon dioxide and releasing the oxygen and that is the oxygen we breathe, right? That's right. That's right. So, are you breathing good? I'm breathing good in here. The oxygen in here is much, much better than it is anywhere else. So, and we actually help the plants too by breathing out CO2 because that's what they need to produce oxygen. Mm -hmm. So that is the way how you fertilize your citrus. So I will uh, show you later on. And uh, this one here is doing well, as you can see, because it has a good, uh, good container. Mm -hmm. Great put a lot of holes so the drainage is well and then good soil because Greg uh, combined that uh, good citrus mix you got bark and charcoal bark, so it breathes properly and also you have fertilizer in here too mm -hmm. now most people here's the thing most people mix the fertilizer in soil I would rather not to recommend that because if you mix right away in the soil, some of the uh, fertilizer meat, you know, hang on with the roots and then it causing the root to, uh, well, how it about causes Miracle, Miracle Grow potting mix has fertilizer built right into their mix. I know, exactly. But it's very light. Very light. Very light, it's not, a, it's not a heavy, it's just enough to help your plant get started. Yeah, I, I really like to put along the, the side of the container, you know, on the yeah. top surface and then work on, so when you water, then the fertilizer will distribute that to the root. Now here is the thing when you water your citrus, water it, make sure that the water is equally uh, given to the plants. Like not all around on one it. side. Yeah, not just one side. You want that root because here's the uh, purpose why water is managing water is important because the fertilizer in how to say this word influences or affects <laughs> In your uh, application of fertilizer because it helps the uh, absorption of nutrients the roots come on you can help do it. me out out there <laughs> you can do it i don't know what you, i don't know what word you're looking for <laughs> help me out there so just bear with me guys all, all right and even him he said like man you, you <laughs> <laughs> you talk too much. <laughs> I talk too much. I love talking. She loves guys. talking during movies. And by the way, you know, gets kicked out of movie theater because she talks during the movie. Yeah, and I'm glad that you are here. <laughs> uh, just help me out with my English. Oh man, <laughs> my English. So by the way, so that's it. You know, we you fertilize properly. When are you going to fertilize your citrus? You fertilize your citrus with a. Uh, adequate amount of macronutrients and micronutrients fertilize it like end of fall you know the end of fall you have to do the liquid fertilizer don't put the release because it is going to a dormant stage and your citrus root would not be active so by putting fertilizer on you know on the tree the root cannot process that so 
you need your foliar spray. Now when the spring comes, so that is the time you fertilize heavily your citrus with nitrogen and phosphate. So that that nutrients should be equally uh, should be in adequate proportion. Now the phosphorus, a lot of people said, oh I will load a lot of phosphorus. And do you know phosphorus building up? It's phosphorus is what you need to produce your flowers and your to get more fruit you need phosphorus. Potassium is for your root developing strong root systems mm -hmm. and then your nitrogen is to give your plants more green growth. Yeah, phosphorus uh, work alongside with nitrogen and mostly it is in the young leaves. Yeah, see, we don't want this little we don't want this little plant to start producing flowers yet. I want this thing to get about this big before it starts producing flowers. So if it gets flowers on here right now, I'm picking them off. You pick them off. You want because when you leave those flowers on there and it's really hard because you can't wait to see your citrus tree start producing flowers and get your first lemon or your first orange but when you leave that on there the growth of the plant stops and it focuses on that flower and fruit production pick those flowers off let your plant develop stronger roots get more vegetation growing up so it can support the weight of those oranges and those lemons they're heavy and they mm -hmm. will actually bend the little tender boughs down to the ground and it, it'll stop the growth so pick those flowers off i know it's hard but for the it, first yeah, it is hard. for the first two or first one, year one through three pick them off after the end of the third year then you can let it start producing fruit and flowers mm -hmm. and um a lot of people complain about why my 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 fruit drops it's part of your nutrients you know your potassium mm -hmm. and your calcium must be uh, given in uh, adequate amount because here's another thing one of our uh one of our viewers wrote to us yesterday, said he had five citrus plants. Four of them were doing beautifully, and one wasn't doing well. The leaves are turning yellow and dropping off. So I'm assuming that he's using the same fertilizer for all five plants at the same time. I'm assuming he's watering them all at the same time. Why the one is doing poorly? Um, the only thing I can recommend to him right now is, a is ask him also, has he moved it? Has it, has it been relocated for say outside, inside, or whatever? If no, nope, if the answer is no to that, take a look at the root system of the plant and see if you can look at the roots of it. And if it's in a pot, tip it upside down. If you, it's it's really bad that you don't want to repot it. But if you can tip it upside down, look at the roots and the soil to see if there's any type of grubs or worms in there that are eating away at the roots that many times like a fungus net you have a fungus net problem if you do uh, just as a little little hint there you said that um, pour some neem in a gallon of water and water your water your citrus plant with neem water that will kill those fungus net larvae if that's mm -hmm. what's causing your plant to yellow and everything else seems fine that's mm -hmm. what I would do is look at the root system look below the soil but if you grow in the five gallon container that's hard to do. do that's hard to do so what i would do then is just assume that they're there and treat it as if you did as a as a precaution as a prophylactic treat the water with neem water or treat the soil with neem water and kill it if there's nothing in there no harm done right mm -hmm. exactly so that is would be a prevention mm -hmm. you know, prevention and the thing now uh how about this this fruit production a lot of people say, oh, I want to I wanna fertilize a lot of phosphorus or a lot of nitrogen so that my, my plants just to get a lot of flowers. Actually, the tree will give you tons of flower, flowers, but most of those flowers don't develop to fruit because that's typical for, mm -hmm. you know, fruit trees. And the other thing you'll notice is that all your, your uh, Myers and your Kalamandin, they all bloom at different times of the year. They don't bloom at the same time. Right now, um, the Kalamandin and the Meyer are in full bloom, and the, uh, the the lime trees are already have fruits on them already. Mm -hmm. They're already fruiting out. So, yeah, this year this year's a little bit weird. Usually, we've got a lot of uh, yellow fruit on our lemon trees. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're just blossoming. So they're they're kind of a weird cycle right now. So, um, <clears throat> so when are you going to? Uh, fertilize your citrus with nitrogen because nitrogen is important springtime you want the uh, nitrogen springtime and also during fruit set so that we have that energy to make that fruit develop especially the flowers and also after uh, post harvest where you harvest all the fruits because 
all those nutrients will be uh, no. lost. When do you give it your Epsom salt? Oh, I have. Oh, thank you for buying this, Greg. Yeah. So Greg uh, bought this, uh, this stuff a week is, ago. This stuff is a miracle. Mm -hmm. Epsom so, salts, MGSO4. <laughs> magnesium, magnesium is also sulfate. helping with your with mm -hmm. your sit, sit loss. Very and, inexpensive. Uh, yeah, so how 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 much of this uh, per per gallon if it is a gallon? I put it like a half a cup per gallon. Half a cup of gallon we mix it in mm -hmm. this. You can also use this as spray. So to, yeah. I use I use that for a spray yeah. to add some uh, to replenish the nutrients in your citrus. For your spray with magnesium. So uh, so you have to apply nitrogen, always have that nitrogen, but make sure that your nitrogen you don't over fertilize with nitrogen because not only it burns your root, it also uh, restricts the fruit production. Greg, <laughs> Greg is my my manager <laughs> here. <laughs> I keep her in line. <laughs> keep me in line. In fact, we already have our uh, work uniform. And uh, you have your work uniform. I got my work uniform. I don't do no work though. You no know, work, so <laughs> doesn't have work. So, thank you for all those uh, of you here, and you've been with us for how many years now? Four. Four. Oh, but year. for those of you who don't know me or you don't know Greg, my name is Marcelina. I'm an author of Backyard Gardening, and he's the editor. Backyard Gardening One and Two, which is No Space Left Behind, and Backyard Gardening Two: How to Make Fifty Thousand a Year in a one foot acre and also I have a degree in agriculture I have four years degree in agriculture and you have a degree in biology, biology administration. business so that's why I in, I had to work with me because he had uh, experience with citrus and also other agriculture mm -hmm. so, alright guys that's a wrap right, for, that today. For, uh, for today if I don't stop her she'll keep on talking until yeah. tomorrow I love talking uh. <laughs> alright so See you next time. See you next time. So what will be next time is about lighting. So lighting, lighting. of your indoor citrus, lighting. Indoor lighting. indoor lighting, that is his expertise. All right. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace, Peace out. out. Let's work it. All right. So these are my citrus trees, guys. This is calamandin or calamansi or Philippine lime. And as you can see, it is producing tons of blooms and some of the flowers are develop developing to fruit, as you can see. Now, when your tree is producing tons of blooms or tons of newly uh, developed fruit, this is the time that you're going to supplement your citrus with nutrients. Some of the nutrients like manganese, uh, zinc, sulfur, and uh, nitrogen because they are elements that are helping in the process of photosynthesis so we need like especially one of the micro micronutrients is boron and boron is going is one of the elements that is going to help the translocation of sugar during uh, flowering and fruiting so it is very important that you're going to supplement your citrus so I use this this is citrus foliar spray so what we're going to do today we're going to spray our citrus with foliar using foliar spray and also fertilizing yeah, uh, fertilizing the citrus using the uh, slow release so one teaspoon per gallon spray so always follow the direction in the label don't uh, just give it without knowing how much is the dosage because as I mentioned if it is too high it affects your citrus if it is too low it's also affects your citrus so do it right all right <laughs> so what we're going to do here I'm going to spray this so Angela my friend Angela is one of my favorite viewers in California hi Angela so this is the uh, foliar spray And make sure that you spray thoroughly until it saturates the leaves. So this is going to replenish the loss of nutrients from having this uh, too much, too many flowers. All right. So after you're done spraying, oh, I'm drip, drip. <laughs> this cause stain. 
and hopefully I have a stain in my uniform right now. Now the next step that I'm going to do today is adding fertilizer to soil. Now I use this citrus tone. I never use any other uh, nutrients. I use it specific for citrus because if it is specific for citrus, they have this uh, good formulation of nutrients and it is balanced and uh, there is a ratio proportion. Now, as you can see, the citrus tone has only 5% ratio of nitrogen, phosphorus is 2%, and then the potassium is 6%. So it's a little bit, potassium must be a little bit uh, higher with the nitrogen, but they are uh, very important in your citrus because nitrogen, aside from nit alongside from nit nitrogen, potassium is helping your tree to combat disease. So it makes your, make your tree's immune system stronger. So you applied your potassium, you applied your citrus tone uh, prior to uh, season, season you know, like spring, uh, flowering, and then after, you know, when you harvest your fruit, that is a post harvest. So you apply another, another uh, fertilizer. Now you also make sure that using the fertilizer, you have to know what is the age of your citrus. If it is too little, you don't need too much fertilizer. But if it is mature tree like this one, this is more than three years old and it is grown in a five gallon container. So I definitely give a good amount or uh, adequate nutrients. So in spring, if you wanna fertilize heavily, you need that nitrogen to uh, increase uh, new growth. So you can add uh, organic compost or uh, you can add uh, manure like chicken manure but I I recommend to use uh, worm casting because worm casting I had a good result with worm casting and uh, use worm casting you need one cup per five gallon of contain uh, five gallon container and then work that in the soil and or mix that with citrus tone. Now, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to mix everything. Uh, I'm going to mix this uh, magnesium sulfate and then citrus tone. I already uh, give this tree with a uh, worm casting, so I don't need worm casting right now. All right, so five gallon, five gallon uh, citrus plant, five gallon container. I need one cup. So I already have measured in here. I have one cup, so what I'm going to do here, let me show you here. Alright, so I'm going to distribute this. I will put this around the tree. You can wear gloves, but right now I just want to dirty my hand and then mix it onto soil now i need magnesium sulfate which is the epsom salt So, all right, so we sprayed our citrus with foliar spray and then we added fertilizer around the base of the tree and water the plants. So this tree would be, uh, would have a good start in spring. And uh, some of the flowers mostly uh, drop on the ground because it's only like 2% of the blooms will develop into fruit because if it is too much it's just natural cause the tree is not able to carry all of those fruit so that is how you take care of your citrus guys and if you have any questions or comments just write below and we answered we answer all your questions and uh, i've been growing citrus for life and <laughs> I enjoyed it and you should grow at least one tree for those of you who haven't had citrus and I mentioned it start with the easy to grow citrus like calamandin it's easy to grow and it is uh, also resistance to uh, pests and diseases so um, again the citrus must receive adequate water adequate drainage adequate nutrients 
to thrive and produce flowers or produce fruit and make sure that your nutrients is given in adequate proportion all right so just get a bag of uh, citrus stone and then mix that with your organic fertilizer and mostly i add like a three layers of compost around around the, the plant just make sure that you don't put the compost closer to the trunk because it creates too much humidity and you don't want to uh, damage the trunk of the tree all right so thank you guys and uh, see you next time